Hey, Mitch. That was cool. Very good. Thanks, Jeff. Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Welcome to a special webinar on the Roland GP10 processor. We are coming to you live from Center Staging in Los Angeles, and I am joined by Jeff Skunk Baxter. Pleasure, Jeff, man. Thanks for being here, Absolute man. Absolute pleasure. Appreciate it. We're going to be talking about all the things that the GP10 can do for you as a guitar player, both as an effects processor, as a synthesizer, as a direct recording interface, all kinds of cool things that this can do. But just to, uh, to let you know what we were doing there at the beginning, you were hearing Jeff play through the Boss GP10. He's going direct into the cameras. And uh, I'm playing a, a G5, the, uh, the V guitar, through the Blues Cube. And uh, that's, all, that's all we had going on. You were just going direct with that great uh, Yeah, we great got tone, this right? uh, thing called the Texas Blues Mod, the patch. It's uh, uh, bluesy, I guess is the word for it. And it amazes me, the, uh, the sound of this thing. Because I'm, I'm not a big amp fan. When I'm in the studio, I really, as much as I can, I like to go direct. And to have this box here to be able to go direct and to be able to create the amp sounds and not have to drag something around. Not that I'm against amplifiers, but it's, I can put all this in a little bag, throw it in my, in my glove compartment and go do a session. Yeah, right. That's right. pretty cool. Certainly easy on the cartridge, isn't it? <laughs> I feel bad for the guys. Yeah, yeah right, right, right. I'll bring more stuff, I promise. Right. So speaking of amazing, You've had an amazing career. Well, I All the way from the, from the very beginning, you're originally from Washington, D.C. You were just telling me you grew up in Mexico. That's correct. That's where yeah. I learned to play guitar, actually. Is that right? Yeah. All right. So how'd you get started? Uh, I wanted a bicycle for Christmas, and my parents gave me a, a guitar, and it pissed me off. So uh, there you go. I, I hung it on the wall for about a year, and then a buddy of mine uh, started taking guitar lessons, and he said, uh, I need somebody to play with, so can I teach you some chords? So I started playing and I realized that there's something about this that I really like. Right. And I'd been taking classical piano anyway, but um, yeah, the guitar just somehow or other made perfect sense to me. Right, right. And uh, that's how it got started. Played in bands when I was 11, 12, you know, surf bands and rock and roll bands. Right. Rock and roll was big in, uh, in Mexico at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the drummers and the guitar players were just oh, you know, fantastic. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I bet, I bet. So you ended up in New York and playing bass with this little band called Jimmy James and the Blue Flames. Well, that, and that was just for a very short period of time. I was working at Jimmy's Music Shop on 48th Street, and uh, a guy came in with a really beat-up Fender Duasonic, and uh, he wanted to trade it for something. And I had just finished doing a, uh, a white Strat, mm -hmm. left-handed for someone, right. uh, and they never picked it up. So I said, what the heck, and I just traded him even with it. And of course, uh, uh, Frank, it wasn't Frank, it was Jim. Jim Squalashi got really mad at me, docked me two weeks' pay, and all, you know, all the like. <laughs> so uh, this gentleman came back in a week later looking for some guitar strings, and he said, hey, I, I need a bass player. And I said, yeah, I'd be happy to do it. It was only for a week or two. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, we went down to the Café Wa, and uh, it was right. Jimmy James and the Blue Flames. I think Jimmy had just finished playing with uh, Joey D and the Starlighters up mm -hmm. at the Peppermint Lounge up the street, and uh, had just started this band. Right, right. Randy California was in it. Mm -hmm. That was, it was, it was pretty cool. Right. And of course, the Jimmy you're referring to is Jimi yeah. Hendrix. Right. And then when Chas Chandler came in, who was the into the club, who was the bass player for the Animals, uh, he heard Jimmy play and I, I guess decided that this was uh, somebody that he wanted to manage and uh, kind of disappeared. And a few months later, it was the Jimi Hendrix experience coming out of England. Right. It was fantastic. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely fantastic. amazing. Amazing. But not the only amazing project you've been involved in. I mean, there have been tons and tons of them. You were one of the founding members of Steely Dan. Uh, that's correct. Yeah, how did that happen? Um, okay, well, uh, I was in Boston, and it was a band that uh, Gary Katz was producing uh, called The Bead Game. And uh, I was in the Intermediate Sound doing a record with, uh, God, Jonathan Edwards, I think it was, or something. And Gary had come in to do some producing, and he heard me play guitar, and he said, listen, there's a record for a woman named Linda Hoover that we're doing in New York. Uh, the songwriters are a gentleman named Donald Fagan and Walter Becker, mm -hmm. and uh, I've never heard anybody play like you do, so would you be interested in coming to New York and doing the record? So I went down, and uh, we did the record, and I was really impressed with the songwriting, and I guess they liked my guitar playing, and mm -hmm. we said, whoever gets to L.A. first, you know, puts a stake in the ground, and we'll form a band. Uh -huh. And that's kind of how that, it happened. That's what happened. So you were on the first three albums. Yeah. And then moved to the Doobie Brothers. Yeah, with a kind of playing in both bands at the same time, mm -hmm. with a left-hand turn playing with Linda Ronstadt, playing pedal steel, and uh, playing a little bit with Johnny Rodriguez and a couple other country guys. And then 
playing at the Palomino Club. But just, yeah, doing as much work as I possibly could. Right, that's what musicians do, right? Yeah, yeah. Because right. Steely Dan had opened for the Doobies, and I ended up playing one song, two songs, five songs, ten songs, and then ended up playing with both bands. Uh -huh. And then my first, first year with the Doobies, I actually played about half the show, played drums, hmm. and then, because the other drummer wanted to play percussion. So I then played guitar for the second half, and I kind of transitioned from one to the other. Right, right. It was that's great. Crazy. Right. Both bands, excellent bands. Well, no question. Good yeah, people. some classic, Good classic, people. classic music. Absolutely. People. Seventeen gold albums, eight platinum albums, Grammy awards, couple it's, Grammy awards. It's been good. Yeah, it's been good. I can't complain. Film scoring, TV work, tons and tons of session work. So lots and lots of great things that you've done. Yeah, sort of the the, the session thing was really what was my first love. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't get me wrong, playing in front of live audiences and. And, and playing rock and roll and you know with a band is is a wonderful experience. Uh, for me, the the studio thing was, I guess, I wanted to be Top Gun. Right. So uh, uh, there are a few guys who've actually been in that position and played in bands. Steve Lukather, mm -hmm. a few people who actually have managed that. I did a bunch of sessions with Luke anyway. But I I love the recording scene and I think I think it kept my head straight too. Right. Producer doesn't care what band you're in either. You play it right the first time or you're fired. Yeah. There's something right. to be said for that, yeah. <laughs> actually. Yeah, right. Actually, As long as you can handle it. Uh, you have the chops. A lot the... of guys had a problem. It's true, there's some great players, but boy, when the red light goes on, a lot of folks just fold up. I don't know what it is. Yeah. To me, it's just a challenge. I, you know, I like it. Right, that's awesome. But, Obviously, yeah. you're great at it. Well, thank you for the compliments. Well, I really, sure, really, sure. You're not a slouch yourself. You, know, you oh, play pretty well, good you guitar. Know, so. As long as it's one, four, five, and there's no numbers after the chords, I'm okay. Hey, that's what... Uh, <laughs> um, uh, Harlan Howard told me at one time in Nashville, I, so I said, how do you write a great song? And he said, three chords and the truth. Yeah. So all you need to do is to add the truth and you'll be an incredible artist. So there you go. There you go. There you go. Well, like maybe, I have, maybe I have a future. <laughs> you certainly have a future, Mitch. <laughs> well, sure. thank you. Thank you for, for the compliment. Sure. Speaking of live playing and studio playing, we've got this Boss GP10 here. And what an amazing box to have for both those situations oh, yeah. because it covers so much. Oh, yeah. Now, I, I think there's, you know, there's so much that it does that let's kind of take this in three different sections here and we'll talk about kind of the three different applications you can have for this. Of course, there's lots you can do with it, but the three kind of main thrusts. And probably the first one is that you can actually run your guitar straight in. You don't need any special pickups. You don't have to That's do correct. anything at all, right? And it basically serves as a yeah, your regular a quarter inch in, right? Regular guitar cable. And what, what's really the basis for this is the engine from the GT100, which is the flagship guitar right. processor from, right. uh, from Roland Boss, and, and uh, all that power is right in there. Can you tell us a little bit about how you're using this and maybe you show us a few patches and things that are sure. going on here? Um, I'm going to slip this guitar. I've, I've had the opportunity to spend some time with it. Um, and because I've been with Roland for, my God, almost 40 years now, um, they're always kind enough to give me the prototypes and I've spent a bunch of time. It's not only an effects processor, but it has some other parts to it that add, you can add kind of synth sounds, processing sounds as well. Mm -hmm. But as an effects box, it has all the great, all the great sounds. As a matter of fact, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Hank Marvin. Right, and, Jeff. And love his, his tone. So I went and put together a This, uh, this um, kind of clean, a little bit of hair. A little bit of chorus if you want. That's the other thing is you can, you can go from, you can modify each patch uh, with presets. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have uh, something extra, you want to add a little chamber, add a little delay. Keep it dry. Which is interesting for live because that's the hard thing is how you get from one sound to the other. I mean, you could switch guitars, but maybe that's not a good idea. Right. So, um, so yeah, you've kind of got two variations there, right? It's your uh, your toe tips, if you will. That's right. Right between that's there, right. you got your main sound, and then step on the other pedal, you can bring a second one in. And everything is Cosm modeled, so you've got the. Yes. It's a very amplifier like response. It has that yes. feel like a real like a real amplifier. It has that tone. The speaker emulation is there. So it doesn't sound like you're running a direct guitar. Obviously, you're playing straight in, and, and uh, it sounds like you're playing through an amp. Oh, yeah. I mean, how beautiful is that? Yeah. And if you're, any patch that you have, 
you can push both the pedals down and immediately go into the tuning mode. Right to the tuner, right? Right. So there's no extra stuff. And boy, more batteries, more boxes, more stuff. I mean, I, I, I'm not saying that stomp boxes are a bad thing because each one has a certain personality. Mm -hmm. But to be able to literally throw this into the glove compartment of your car right. and go to a gig is, even in the studio, is kind of scary. And, and this does have, I mean, speaking of stomp boxes, there are so many models, Cosm models of stomp boxes. There's like 21 overdrives and That's distortions the thing. in here. That's it's, the it's, thing. All, uh, all the classics all, are there. All, Tube screamers, fuzz faces. OD1s, all that stuff. absolutely. All, all that the stuff, good, is in stuff that I, you know, I have a lot of, that I have a lot of love for. Right, right. Um, and, you know, this beautiful processing. I just want to play the guitar so I can hear the tone, right? Because I love the sound of it so much, right? Right. And again, it's all all the stuff that's built in, with uh, a little bit of synthesis as well. You can mm -hmm. you can add little parts and pieces to it. So it's not only your your straight guitar, but it's got that something extra, right? That I really like, right? Um, right. And you have a real time control. There's the built in expression pedal on the front absolutely. There. And you can program the pedal to either do volume, mm -hmm. or to add the effect that you want, or to do a number of things, make it to turn it into a wah-wah pedal. It's, sure. It's all totally programmable. I think it could run eight parameters at once with that, with that pedal, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah, there's a little algorithm in there. Yeah. And there's actually a, uh, actually a jack on the back for a second expression pedal, if you want to get even more... Uh... Got to have an EV5. Yeah. Can never have enough of those. Yeah, get your and feet... And that's a Fender... I'm sorry, that's a Rolling pedal. I have a whole pedal. warehouse full of them because you can never get enough of them. Yeah, get your feet in the action. And this is just a pretty straight ahead, kind of big verb sound, you know, which... Uh... Now, with the ability to have a lot of pre-delay on the reverb, mm -hmm. that's always something that's been that's bothered me for years. Reverb and amplifiers is nice, but there's a I, I can never find the spot between too much reverb because I like to hear it and and the mud factor. Right. So with the ability to do the pre delay on all your passage, I've used this pre delay live in a big room and it sounds great because you get the definition. <laughs> Listen to the amount of reverb. I mean, it's huge, yet you can actually use the patch. Right. And that's one thing that the conversation that I had a lot with a lot of the engineers at Roland is say, please, oh, please, oh, please, give me tons of pre-delay so I could use it live. Right. And they did it. They did it for me. All right, absolutely. Um, kind of blues amp sound. <laughs> Now, if, if I had my eyes closed, I'd swear that I was playing through, and I won't go into the, the names of the amplifiers, but there mm -hmm. are you know, some classic, classic guitar amps, and no noise. No noise, Absolutely right? no noise. Right. I've got it. To get that sound out of most amplifiers, I'd probably be hearing a little bit of 60 cycle hum, plus some bad tube biasing, plus a right. whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah, <laughs> you get all that nastiness, and when you dig exactly. in there, all that pick response. Exactly, and it drives, and it's responsive because the models that they've that they put in here, they've actually taken the time uh, to, to, and I've you know I've, I've worked with them, and they've worked with other guitar players, taking the time to try to get the response right because you can add all kinds of effects, but unless it's behaving mm -hmm. like what you're used to, it's it's foreign. So right. the dynamic. <laughs> Amazes me, they really, right. they really got it right. So I don't need an amp. 
Yeah. I guess is a yeah. kind of scary thing. And even for practicing at home, you can set up a tone like that. That's a big, nasty tone that you'd think is a cranked up amplifier, but you can run it out of the head for Ah, uh, absolutely. And, silently. and then when the bass player decides that it's time for him to take a solo, we just take over. That's not a synth sound. Hmm. That's actually a a processed guitar sound. No synthesizer. So that's just your quarter-inch cable plugged straight in your regular guitar Absolutely. cable. Absolutely. So, I, like I say, when uh, you know your buddy wants to become Jaco Pastorius, you are now in a position to to cover the band. Right. And go all the way down to the octave. Go all the way down to what a normal bass guitar would be. And then when he's finished with that, then you can go back to do you know. Went doing something else. Right. If, if, Jump um, the octave back up. This I love. Real good country song. As a matter yeah. of fact, that's. Uh, I probably can't play the song because we don't have the copyright, but that's much the sound I used on 9 to 5 hmm. with uh, Dolly Parton. That right. exact compressed... Compressed kind of country, kind of, twangy... Absolutely. Chicken picking tone. Again, the response is great. When you compress things, you got noise problems always. Mm -hmm. There is a noise gate in there as well, which is very effective. And uh, I have it on there right now, but there's no way you can hear it. It's amazing. Yeah. So they really spent the time to do it. So love the country sound. Then there's this thing we call supermodulation, which uh, sound and it's right one of the things that I like about effects boxes if they're done right is every time you play a patch it starts to suggest a song mm -hmm. and as I started to go through this I had my you know I had my garage band up plugged into the I had plugged this into the to the computer because I found myself writing songs just based on the particular patch, right. which means to me that the patches are musical. Mm -hmm. You know, right. now I've gone through and 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 customized these to, to my own feel. But the basic patches that come in here, I mean, this super modulation. I all I did was change the reverb a little bit. Uh -huh. So as right. soon as I started playing it, I started writing, writing a tune. Right, right. Um, Roland Boss, of course, invented the uh, chorus. He found absolutely. The original chorus ensemble, so you'd expect they'd have it, but that, that is really a lush chorus sound that's still in tune. And that's something that can sometimes happen with heavily modulated kind of things as they start to sound a little bit... Uh, and you have total control over it. Right. That's the other thing, is being able to get that... Sometimes the difference between, you know, 26 and 27 on the uh, on the amount of, of delay that you're using between the uh, between the, the direct and the and the and the chorus sound makes all the difference. Right. And and you can access all of that in here. Everything. Right. Everything. And the only other patch I had here, which was kind of fun. Nice rockabilly patch, yeah. and uh, well, actually kind of a good funk patch. Added a little bit of just a tiny bit of delay, mm -hmm. but again, I could use this live because right. I've got the pre-delay part enough so that the, the original sound, the original direct sound, comes out, and I can have the effect. So, I mean, I could go on forever. There's just so many great patches in here, but that's right. pretty much what you can do. 
With the direct guitar. Just with the quarter inch. You don't right. need anything else. Right, right. So to sum up, you've got basically the engine of a GT100. Right. You've got tons of great patches in there. You've got real-time control with both the foot switches and right. with classic the expression Classic stomp pedals. boxes. Yep, well, all, all classic stomp box love. models, all the amplifier models, speaker emulation. So you really have a total guitar processor there that you can just plug into and use either in the studio or take it to the gig and plug it into your amplifier and use it for effects. Well, that's, that's what I say. I'm going to take this with me. I've got a gig coming up in D.C. next week. Um, and I wasn't sure I was going to be able to use this because I wasn't sure I was going to be familiar enough with it. I spent a half an hour with this thing, and it was, it's very intuitive. Right. Even crazy things like, do you want to put the mic directly in front of the speaker or a few degrees off? I mean, I don't know if I'm that crazy, but if you are, you can dig into it's that for you. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Right, absolutely. Gorgeous. Incredible. I got, I've got this, uh, this cognitive dissonance going on here because I'm hearing Parkening or Julian Bream or Pepe Romero, and, and, <laughs> right. but then you're, you're playing a uh, plexiglass guitar with, <laughs> with this Stratocaster neck That's it. That's yeah, it. Amazing. So what's going on here is you've actually disconnected the quarter-inch guitar cable. That's correct. So there's no regular guitar cable out. You've got a 13-pin cable coming out running into the GP10. Right. How does that work? What's going on with the uh, system here? Well, if Roland, I had... Many, many years ago, when we first started looking at building guitar synthesizers, uh, Mr. Kakahashi wanted to support the guitar player because keyboard players had all the fun. Mm -hmm. So they thought, okay, let's, uh, let's look at the guitar synth. And we had, they had done some experimenting. I had done some experimenting. I took uh, six separate tape heads from a tape recorder, put them in under each string, and started to experiment with the ideas of having separate outputs that you could process. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, uh, Roland had inculcated that idea into the original guitar synth, the GR500, and <clears throat> has been going down the road of developing what they call the, uh, the GK divided pickup, right. which is a, uh, a, a pickup attachment that converts pitch to voltage mm -hmm. and allows a guitar player to, to uh, access the, ca the capabilities of synthesis. Right. And so the next move from that is when computer modeling uh, uh, became uh, possible because of processor speed and, um, and uh, technology, the next step was to go into modeling instruments, which has become sort of de rigueur now. So this sound... is a model right. of a nylon string classical guitar. Right. And yeah, so if you close your eyes, and you you, when we first started playing this, you were looking at me going, what's going on right, here? Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, absolutely. So there are a number of models in here. But just before you step on, the, or yeah. before you move on, so just so we're all completely yeah. clear, basically the, the white pickup at the back of your guitar yes. there, that's the divided pickup, and there's a separate pickup there for each of the strings. Yes. So there's an individual output coming down the 13-pin cable into the GP10, and that nylon string you're hearing is not a synthesized guitar. That's a digital model. That's of a, absolutely right. And, and so we're not doing synthesis here. No. You're doing processing of the actual guitar tones. And the reason I bring that up and that I think it's important to stress that is there's no delay here. There's no latency. Oh, there's, no. there's no lag or anything. It's just like you're playing a nylon string not guitar. Not at all. I'm, I'm not... In the old days, when, we, when the first guitar synth came out, you sort of had to compensate for that, mm -hmm. which was okay because most guitar players play on top of the beat anyway, so it kind of worked out. <laughs> Maybe it was a good thing. But um, nope, goes through all of that, mm -hmm. and then um, into the 13 pin and into the model here. Right. And you're right, it's absolutely... feels there like you're is, playing the actual no guitar. At all. And there are tons and tons of different models here that let you get the oh, sounds of different guitars, which is, which is where you were about to, uh, to go before I interrupted you. No, 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 no. Um, 
uh, one of the things that drew, always drove me crazy was having to, on stage, having to switch guitars, mm -hmm. especially if I wanted to play some acoustic. Or if you're songwriting and you want to get a little bit of inspiration to have to put the guitar down, pick up another instrument, and then, you know, kind of get set and then do it again, before, and you maybe lose your idea. So... <laughs> Twenty-eight. So live, if if a songwriter or the band wants to go into a middle section in a in a piece of music and just have an acoustic part, there's no rushing around with guys coming out on stage and trying to get it right and right. and kind of feedback and, and all that other crazy stuff. No, it's just thank you. It amazes me. That's not, there's uh, let's see what else we got here. That was a J. Um, that was kind of a, a Morton sound. Um, let's see here. Oh, sorry, that was a that was a, a J forty five sound. This is kills me. There's your Martin sound. That's a Martin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're looking yeah. at me going, yep. Yep. That's a Martin sound. And not only does this sound good. Live, but when it, I've, I've done some experimenting, you know, recording it, mm -hmm. it's amazing how it records. It's kind of scarier coming off the hard drive. Right. I haven't recorded it to tape yet, but it's it's just. I think it mellows when it goes to the computer. Right. It gets even better. <laughs> but again, being able to, to as a guitar player, to be in control, to be able to access all the tools that you would like to access at any particular time, and not have to wait and not have to lose the flow and right. lose your creative ideas. That's why I love the modeling in this thing. Right, right. And it's not just acoustic guitars. You've got different electric guitars. Oh, there's all, the all kinds of, there's all kinds of crazy stuff in here. There's, a, there's one patch that I, do, that I dearly love. I'll just find it here. Um, this is a great... Now, do I want to... To like while the uh, the drummer's doing a have to do a drum solo, do I want to try to get a capo with no lights on on stage? Find the right spot. Hopefully, I get it just right so that the capo doesn't detune the instrument right. and then play the part. No, just switch it to a high string. So that's a 12 string mm -hmm. with a capo on right? the seventh fret. Right. Again, no muss, no fuss. No retuning. No and that no. is a model of an electric 12 string, mm -hmm. capo. And if you've ever put a capo on an electric 12 string and tried to get it to play in tune, it just ain't <laughs> happening. So, um, well, what else would you like to hear? Um, you got a Telecaster in there? Um, or a Rickenbacker? I actually do have a telly in here. And if you really want to have some fun with it, um, come on. Let's be go through the patches here. Right. Uh, yeah, all the different guitars are modeled. Mm -hmm. So you can preset whatever it is that you want, um, whatever kind of guitar sound that, you, that you're particularly looking for. And then uh, this is a telly. Instead of trying to get my B bender guitar on and hoping that that's in tune. Right. So the pedal is taking place of the whole mechanical bender thing. It is exactly like a B bender. Mm -hmm. All I'm doing is. And it, the, the modeling in the computer is doing it for me with no latency. Right. I mean.
that's one of the that's an amazing demonstration actually of one of the benefits of that divided pickup is you can put that pedal on just the B string. It doesn't affect all the other strings when, you, when you push that down. So you have that total separation between the strings. And if you're if you're one of these guys who loves um, exotic tunings, you can go into the to the box and literally tune each string any way you want to. Right. So you can you can build custom tunings. Crazy stuff. I think you can go up 24 half steps and down 24 half steps on each string. So if you oh, want yeah. to do a the wackiest tuning in the world, it's in there. There you go. You could be a lute player and a mandolin player at the same, same time. Same time. Right. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. So I saw there was a, a jazz guitar in there. Oh what is yeah. That, uh, what does that one do? <clears throat> that one. That one does good jazz. And again, this this so you just so you see, there's nothing. No guitar connection. No, no guitar connection at all. It's the real thing. Uh, yeah, I know. It's scary. It's the real it's thing. It's scary. And That's then I don't have to take my my Super 400 on my Dan Jelly car out with me. I yeah, can right. actually use, you know, this thing is tough as nails, so I don't have to worry about it. Right. But yeah, beautiful jazz, beautiful jazz guitar. Right. Um, and then again, you know, when, you're, uh, when your bass player decides to have to do his thing, you're... Uh, If you decide that you want to be Jaco Pastorius, you know. Take your bass solo. Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely. And then we'll have to switch, which opens up some interesting possibilities for live performances. Mm -hmm. um, what if you want to have three bass players? What if you want to have four bass players? Sure. What if you want to create a, uh, a fretless or cello like uh, part in a song? Right. Three guitar players have this. You're, or you're playing. Uh, you're playing Spinal Tap's Big Bottom. You there you go. It. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to mention that to Harry Shearer next there time. You I said, you're going to need to have this thing. Yeah, right. So we'll exactly. Help you with that. Exactly. Exactly. So it's. Uh, you, you mentioned that uh, you were one of the pioneers of, of guitar synthesis, working with Mr. Kakahashi and, and Roland on things. And one of the first synthesizers was the GR500. And if I'm not mistaken, you actually recorded the very first example of that on record with Donna Summer. That's right? correct. Um, uh, I was doing a Donna Summer record, and we were doing the Hot the the Bad Girls album, mm -hmm. and um, they wanted something for Bad Girls. He, uh, Giorgio said, "I want something different. No, something different. So I thought, something different. Okay." So I went out to Roland, and I grabbed off the bench was the prototype with the wires hanging out. And we had one of those cake things that you put on to keep the flies <laughs> off. Oh, everything was on a piece of plywood. Schlepped it down to the studio, plugged it in, and did the solo in Bad Girls. How about that? Yeah. It was, that's, that's the first recorded example of guitar? That's it. That's pretty that's amazing. It. Pretty that's amazing. It. Pretty amazing. And wow. it was beautiful. Even then, it was tracking pretty well. Right. You know? But look how easy it is now. Oh, it's crazy now. Right. So one of the, one of the uh, other things that the divided pickup lets you do is access, actually, an analog model GR300 that, yes. that is built into the, uh, to the GP10. Um, I have to find it, but it is in here. So the GR300, for those who aren't, aren't familiar with it, was an analog synthesizer that you could drive from a guitar. That's right. Very famously played by Andy Summers on, uh, on uh, some of the big hits by, yep. by The Police. And also Pat Metheny is well known for, for sure. using that. Pat and was on that synth thing right away. All the time, yeah. And it, it has some very interesting characteristics that, that made it a very musical sounding analog synthesizer. Like, oh, yeah. Like, for example, it, just, it used a real brute force approach. And so what you had was actually a different waveform on the lower strings than you have on the top strings yes. and a different dynamic response between those strings as well. And they've modeled all of that right here in the GP10. Everything. So when you're, when you're playing that, you're playing 
a GR300 without oh, yeah. all of the analog the hassles. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Could you play a little bit for us? You got sure. the GR300 lead. And, and again, if, if uh, not every band can have a keyboard player. Mm -hmm. So maybe not every band can have a synth player. So, and I'm going to approximate a song that's uh, because of the copyright things. But if you didn't have a synth player, but you needed a... It's the whole engine. Yeah. And it sounds, close your eyes, and you think, you know. Big analog synth. That's it. Yep. That's it. What's amazing there, though, watching you play that, there's no delay. Nope. Because we have the divided pickup, and it's going to a model analog synth in here. And it also is following all of your playing. It even followed the whammy bar when you, uh, when you added absolutely, the vibrato on the end absolutely. of there. Absolutely, which I love, because to be able to have a, well, we'll go to a 12-string uh, guitar with a tremolo, imagine trying to tune that. Right. That just ain't ever going to happen. Right. And be, and you can play lead. So all the guys that are doing all that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, don't have to modify like your technique though. You're still playing as a guitar player. You're not, uh, you're not having to change anything. Yep. Nope, it's all, it's all there. That's amazing. And there are a couple of other synthesis features as well. You can do some pretty interesting things there if you really want to dig into the synthesis uh, capabilities of the, uh, of the GP10. Lots of different sounds that are available there for, for recreating those classic synth sounds. Well, and also because I'm really close to this patch, uh, I'm a big fan of the drop D tuning. Mm -hmm. that is. And there it is. I didn't see you turn the tuners, though. Yeah, I just uh, <laughs> don't have to worry about it. And all I did was just lower the guitar while I was playing, I mean, mm -hmm. you look at what just happened. You know, did he like shift the neck or something? The whole thing just drops. Now, if you're a heavy metal guy, mm -hmm. you can go into this this uh, system and lower everything to E flat. So, for me, um, in this next gig that I'm going to do uh, next week, a lot of the stuff is in E flat, and I'm not going to. I don't want to change the tuning because it changes the intonation of the instrument. Right. So I'm just going to go in here, set up a bunch of patches at E flat, and not even have to worry about it. You're all covered. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, oh, this is this talk about cool synth. Here's uh, what everybody would love to do if you don't have two guitar players in the band. Be able to play harmonies with yourself. Right, right. And it plays in key. You're in the key of C there. And it's modeled tone, so it's not pitch shifting the, you're not using a pitch shifter that changes the tone no. of your guitar. It's actually two models of those pitches. And so Absolutely. it sounds like two guitars and, playing and it's together. it's in a sense, two guitars. Mm -hmm. Each separate in its own, uh, being able to, to access its own distortion and be able to access its own effect. So part of the problem with distortion in general is things just get it's like trying to cram everything through a funnel. Right. Whereas what they've done here is with the divided pickup, it allows you to process each string and keep it clean. But right. that's amazing to me. Yeah. So all you guys that want to play harmony out there and there's only one guitar player in the band. Now you can do it. Absolutely. Um, gosh, there's so many. You know, here's a sound that is... I don't know if he would use it for a lot of things. I kind of like... Um now, as an intro to a song, 
Nice pad sound. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. You know, it's a beautiful sweeping filter. Clean pad. How cool is that? Again, intros to songs, uh, ability to um, to go after things that you normally couldn't do. I mean, if you're really crazy, you know. If you really want to do that, if right. if you're in a band that does Rolling Stone songs and you want to do that Rolling Stone song, you can you can have the sitar. You can do that. What what they've what we've done here is we've taken the, the B string and lowered it a, a whole tone. Mm -hmm. Which is a, an example of whatever you want to do. If that's your flavor of song, if that's what you want to do, piece of cake. Right, right. And then, um, well, let's see. I know there's one thing that you had asked me about. Uh, was that the uh, here? Yeah, I know. The, Rick, you, the Rickenbacker was yeah, the one. Yeah, I knew you were going to say yeah, that. Yeah, I'm kind of curious to hear that. You were asking me about that. There it is. There Amazing. it is. And it follows uh, the, the fact that the top two strings are unison and the rest of them are octaves. So it's not, it's not trying to be tricky and limited in its ability to reproduce by, okay, I'll give it to you the first seven frets, but then we can't do it. No, the power of this thing is, right. is ferocious. Right. Ferocious. And again, because you have the separate strings, you can do that. You can have unison on the top two strings and octave above. Very, very cool. And very if cool. you're really super wacko, if you want to change some of the strings on the 12 string, so if you want to do modal tunings, if you want to do, who knows, maybe you want all the strings to play in thirds or fifths. It'll do it. Piece of cake. Yep. Piece it'll, of cake. It'll do it. So one of the things we were also talking about is that um, you can actually plug in your regular guitar connection and layer that with some of oh, these, yeah. these model tones. Oh, yeah. So you get both things happening at the same time, and so you're getting all the effects and the modeling all, all simultaneously on both sides of this. That's just the guitar. And it follows, absolutely, it follows, yeah. so you could almost be doing a, an intro. So instead of having to have the synth player come in with you? Yeah, you can do it. Yeah. You can do it. Yeah, you, some great you, you used a switch there to bring that in, but you could actually do that with the expression uh, You can pedal. do it here, too. Do I just, because this is, you know, I'm used to this, but... Yeah. Um, you can do it either way. That's the divided pickup, if you want to put it on another instrument, you can buy it separately, and it does have that switch to be able to switch back and forth between dry guitar, complete synth, or a combination of both as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can, do what, you can do pretty much everything uh, with, the, uh, with the foot pedals here. Mm -hmm. So do you have some other layered examples that you could uh, that you could show us what you can do with that? Yeah, let's see. with the synth. So again, you're doing an intro. It's huge sounding. Absolutely yeah. huge sounding. It's so big. Um, let's see. Well, God, there's so many things. I, I, you know, I look at this and I... Uh, let's see what we got here. There's some really whacked out stuff on uh, here. 
which the question is, it used to be you were limited, you know, guitar, guitar players would play and do what they do based on the limitations that they have. Mm -hmm. I mean, guitar players are, are, are all diode heads. It's all how many goes into this and goes out of this can I find? How much stuff right. can I plug in to try to get me to the point where I find something that's slightly different and, 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 and um, inspirational. Mm -hmm. This thing will take you down so many roads. So, solos. Again, all at your fingertips. Right. No, 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 no waiting, as they say. Right. Absolutely. Just go right to the patches. Right. Um, you know, it's just hard to to describe once you get a tool like this in your hands, mm -hmm. um, because there are so many guitar players that I know when they when the guitar synthesizer first came out, uh, it it allowed them to access strings, horns, nylon string guitars, things that were never accessible before which to me is part of the creative process. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not only allowing you to do some synthesis, but we're taking what the guitar does normally and just adding so many new dimensions to it. Right. That I love. I right. can't get enough of this. I've been up, I got this thing a couple of weeks ago and I've been up all night, every night. Just Can't stop playing with it. I can't help it. That's what happens. That's, stupid. That's what happens. I need some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you're a guitar player. Mm -hmm. And so you're looking at this and you're going, yeah. Yeah, but 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 what about like? I just want a really fat, ballsy sound. I want right. to play guitar. I, you know, I, I don't have a Marshall stack here, or I don't have something else. Can I get those classic kind of guitar tones? Right. And absolutely. And I'm going to play a little just a little piece, and I'm going to going to be using some open strings. If you were using a typical distortion box, there's no mm -hmm. way you could do this because right. it would just be choking all over itself. Mm -hmm. But because each string is processed separately and the distortion for each string is processed separately there's no intermodulation and there's no problem with it so what i'm going to do is play just the just the guitar that you would love you know mm -hmm. do that. Right. And then if you want to add a little, little to it. That's a huge tone, huge tone. Absolutely. And, and as, as you mentioned, you can't play a jazz chord with that tone, with with a heavy high gain tone like that. But with this, you can because the strings are separate. I can hear every note. It's high gain jazz. <laughs> yeah, right. It's true. Yeah, it's true. So Jeff, as hard as it is to believe, we're still not done. This will oh. do even a ton more than that. Oh, yeah. And one of the coolest things for, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a big home studio guy, and I know you're a big studio guy and do a lot of writing and stuff. Is this has a USB port on it. Yes. And you can plug that straight into your computer, and there's a number of things that that lets you do. You can do USB MIDI, right? So you can be playing your guitar, and it sends out MIDI commands. You can be playing virtual synthesizers. Right. You can be playing hardware. Separate strings, too, Separate strings, want. everything, all, yeah. all separately. Yep. And it's all, again, the delay, is there's just no problems with that because it's such a direct connection and going over USB. But you can do more than that, even. 
Well, you just coined the term re-guitar. Well, re-guitar, yeah, isn't that cool? I didn't, I didn't coin it. That's pretty that's cool. A, that's a boss thing. But I'm going to re-guitar today. I'm going to re-guitar today. You know, re-amping, right? Re-amping yeah, is when you right? record the guitar and then send right. it back out through an amp. Well, with this, you can record over USB and record each of the six strings onto their own separate track. That's right. And what you're recording is just the dry guitar signal. And then you can send that back through USB through the GP10 and change the guitar sound that you're using. So you could record it, just your dry guitar, come back and say, oh, I want to try it with a nylon string. No, I'd like to try it with a steel string. Well, let's try it with that Rickenbacker 12 string. And it'll do all of that. And then right. record it, and then go back and use it to process something else. Exactly. I mean, it's almost like you just plug it into each slot on your way down. Because it's so powerful, it's pretty much got everything you would need to do all the processing. You don't right. have to have a bunch of different stuff. Uh, now, the, the USB piece is really exciting. And the latency, I don't, there's none. Right. It's amazing. Right. And of course, you can also record with the process sound. So you could record the sounds that you were having oh, over absolutely. USB. And it's all just USB, just straight in, one, one cable. So just as a front end for a guitar recording system, for writing songs, for demoing, for doing full on productions, film scores. I mean, look at all the tones that you have available there, plus well, all the synthesizers you, you have go. access to and everything. You want to get creative, you could do hex effects. So you could record each string separately, put separate effects on it, and get these amazing textures going on with all the tuning stuff you can do. The possibilities are just, man, it's, it's just mind-boggling what you could do with, a, uh, with, a, with the GP10. You know, lay down your drum track, and then there's a lot of great bass models and great mm -hmm. bass patches. Lay down your bass part, put down a couple of acoustic guitars, maybe a capo 12 string, and then a couple of, of, of electric cleans, and then a maybe a, a fat tone, and then maybe some of the poly stuff. Right. And it, I mean, you're, and not only are you recording uh, a much more interesting, much more diverse uh, piece of work, but you're moving so fast. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that, about this that really intrigued me, is the, when, you, when you're in a room full of guitars and a room full of stuff, right. and you're, okay, I'm going to patch this into this, and I grab this, if you have a good understanding, which you will in a half an hour, you can move so fast, right. saving time, saving money, and staying within the creative process. Right. It doesn't break that creative flow. That's it doesn't it. take your mind out into tech world, and then you've got to come back to music world. You can stay in music world, and it's all right there in the one, uh, in the one box. And it's interesting that, that um, the folks at Roland, <clears throat> when we were originally talking about this, we all, you know, we're all tech heads, and we all talked about how great the technology is. But the fact that we're taking into consideration things like time management, mm -hmm. saving money in production costs, I mean, those are things that usually aren't engineered into a piece of equipment. Right. But those conversations, we had those conversations mm -hmm. when we were talking about this. Right, obviously it paid off. I mean, yeah. like you said, take it to a gig and you can cover so much stuff. But then in the studio, it's, it's a whole other yeah. spectrum, a whole other palette that you have to, to work with. Really, really amazing. Jeff, thanks so much for doing this. Oh, listen, I really appreciate you taking the time, Mitch. No, you took the time, man. I know you're, uh, you're uh, heading out on a flight. You've got uh, projects and things that you're working on. Uh, that's so okay. I uh, really um, appreciate it. Uh, the folks at uh, Sweetwater have been really good to me. And I, awesome. I like the fact that uh, Sweetwater exists because it makes uh, great equipment like this you know, available to everybody very quickly. From uh, I have a, a bass player friend of mine who actually works at Northrop Grumman with me, mm -hmm. and uh, he had uh, ordered some uh, some stuff from Sweetwater. They called him up every day. Right. They were right. They were right on. Mm -hmm. You know, backing it up. That's the one thing people are, I, I guess, a little bit frightened of is if I order online, you know, where do I go? Well, right. I just pick up the phone. Right. So that's a pretty cool thing. Well, thank you. Thank you for saying you that. We we appreciate it. We appreciate yeah. your uh, your support and your friendship. It's my pleasure. It's a wonderful yeah. thing. And thank you very much for watching this, uh, this webinar on the GP10. It's an amazing piece of gear. If you have questions about this, give your Sweetwater sales engineer a call. Visit Sweetwater.com. There's all kinds of information there. And as I mentioned, your sales engineer can tell you all about it as well. So a great resource to consult if you have any questions. And finally, my thanks to Roland Boss and to Roland AR here at Central Staging for, uh, for allowing us to come in here and providing the film crew and for, uh, for making it possible for Jeff to be here. It's just a wonderful thing that they did that for us, and we're very appreciative. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks a lot.
Oh, by the way, one of the things that totally amazes me about the GP10 is it all fits into this bag. This is all I need. Thank you, Roland. <laughs>